Hello punters, welcome back to another Saturday Racing Preview. Of course, got a fantastic meeting tomorrow at Caulfield. Also a fantastic meeting up at Randwick as well. We'll also be tapping into Morphofield. We've got some good races there, so I'm going to bring back the Around the Tracks preview video where I'm going to be looking at the best bets from uh, multiple tracks across the country. Of course, at Caulfield, we've got the uh, Group 1 Super Clark Stakes, so 1,400 metres showcase in the meeting tomorrow. Also got the Group 3 Bendigo Bank MRC Foundation Cup over the 2,000 metres. The Group 3 uh, Hay Now Stakes for the Mares over the 1,200 metres and also the uh, Aquas Jim Maloney Stakes over the 1,400 metres for the three-year-old fillies. Up at uh, Randwick, of course, massive showcase event there, the Colgate Optic White Stakes for Wait for Age Group 1 race there over the 1,600 metres. Then we've also got the uh, the Group 2 Shorts, of course, a nice little preview once again before the Everest for a lot of the sprinters in that race are heading towards the Everest or trying to target to get a slot into the Everest. So a really interesting race there. The Group 3 Bill Ritchie Handicap over 1,400 metres. The uh, Group 3 Kings and Town Stakes as well. So a really good meeting up at Randwick to look forward to. And then, of course, over at Moorfield, like I mentioned, there's a nice meeting there. We've got the uh, WH Wiley Handicap that we'll be looking at as well as a couple of other key races in that meeting as well as we will also be looking at Eagle Farm up there looking at the best bets from that meeting there as well so really looking forward to getting into it of course this first video as always we look at the Caulfield meeting so get that get that up and have a look at the moment the tracks rated a good four but there's a lot of showers in the area so that we, we could get in that soft range but at this stage we're looking at a good four uh, look at the first race of the card tomorrow it's over the 1800 meters a benchmark 78 race and uh, really interesting sort of race here. It's a tough one to start off with. Look at the speed map. I'd say Aristocratic Miss will find the top with maybe the Delphi. Uh, not too much speed in this race. Uh, first Class Dreamer might be sitting just in behind them. For me, look, number three Aristocratic Miss is, is going to be hard to beat. Um, the fact that it'll be up on the speed, uh, I really like that. And I, I like the form last start. It comes out of a race behind Roxa Castle at Sandown. Jumbo Ozaki was always also in that race. It came from back in the field, what was pretty hard to run on that day. I mean, the, the two leaders, Jumbo Ozaki and, and Roxa Castle, really sort of gapped them and got away. And this horse actually did make up a bit of ground from the back, so I thought it was a good good effort. If we can sit uh, close to the speed this time around, like we saw last time uh, it ran here at Caulfield behind Tavi Run, I think we'll see this horse go very close to winning and uh, should be pretty hard to beat. I think the $6.50 is a nice price. In for second, number two, Shared Abish, and this looks a very nice horse for Chris Waller. Of course, come across from Ireland. It's first up here in Australia, so that's my one reason just to maybe hold off. But it's got some nice form from over there in Ireland, including an open uh, handicap race where it won over 2,200 metres. So this horse will definitely be looking for further and probably targeting further races in. But it's class could see it get over the line, so it's not at the worst price at $5.50 if you want to have a play there. In the third, number six, First Class Dreamer, of course, has been running really nice. This preparation was very good behind Porosity last time out at Sandown. The hillside track came from the back uh, along with Porosity, just couldn't quite get over the line there. Prior to that, Beat Ripper Book nicely in a benchmark 64, but it has a massive step up in class here. But I suggest to say that this horse can do it. I mean, this horse went into a, a Group 2 race at Rose Hill last preparation where it finished by the eventual derby winner, uh, Angel of Truth. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good form line for that to come through. And then in for fourth, number five, but it's true for Wendy Kelly. I thought it was really good last time out at Mooney Valley behind Silent Raw. I think that form's not too bad. I think we'll be seeing Juna Pile go up to... Ramwick, a bit of a spoil alert there and a win up there. So I think that form coming out of that race is not too bad. Prior to that, it was really good at Sandown and Echuca. So this horse will be up towards uh, in the finish as well. And look, I've left number four ahead of the throne out, but I could suggest that it could improve back based off its last start, Mooney Valley run. I just thought that uh, for me, uh, but it's true, it was a little bit better out of that race. Uh, so look look at the numbers here. Race number one at Caulfield. I'd say number three, Irish Crate Miss on top for me at $6.50. Looks a good bet to have. In the second, number two, Shared Ambition, of course, going to be looking at the mounting yard there and look for the betting moves late. If they really chime into this horse, you might want to have something on it. But I've got it in the second at this stage but based off its first up. Uh, in the third, number six, First Class Dreamer. And in the fourth, number five, but it's true. Moving to race number two, it's a three-year-old race over the 1,600 metres. And looking at the speed map here, I'd say the lifeline will spear out and find the top. It probably won't be contested too much. I'd say Reckoning might come out off the inside barrier and 
you know, get towards the lead. Besides that, I mean, Skittle will be prominent, but won't necessarily find the top. So for me, I think number two, the Lifeline, is a very good bet to have here. I thought it was very good last time out at Sandown. Led all the way, gave a real nice kick on that occasion. Sol Patch really charged home late. They gapped the rest of them. So I think this uh, horse has got a bit of ability. It's got four mine condos express at Mooney Valley and beat Wild Choice at Cranman prior to since come out one its maiden. So the form's not bad around the, the lifeline. This horse will bowl along out front. Steve Bass is a very good front riding, uh, uh, front running rider. And uh, I think this will also be just very hard to it'll give him something to chase. I think at five dollars and eighty five the place, it's pretty good uh, bet to have. In the second number three, Long Jack. Now this horse was very good. Uh, of course, coming over from New Zealand and winning nicely at at, at uh, the Ballarat Synthetic. Meeting a few weeks ago where it beat Rue Royale pretty easily. Got absolutely smashed in the betting that day. It was a massive move for that horse coming across uh, from New Zealand for the Murray Baker, Andrew Forsman team. And uh, from all reports, this horse got a lot of ability. Did showcase on the synthetic. Of course, got to come over the, onto the turf now and do replicate that run. But if we get into that soft range, I, most horses from New Zealand do get through the going quite okay. So I still think this horse is a nice bet. I just think $3.10. Uh, to be the favourite, I just couldn't be with it. Uh, the first time around coming off the synthetic, but I like what I've seen so far around from it. In the third, number one, Huntley Castle. Now, this horse has had a bit of a spell, but it run, uh, it's had some really nice wins, including an 800-metre race at Flemington, uh, which is a two-year-old race, and prior to that, it beat Perfect Scent. Uh, Bendigo, of course, came out and has run some good races since. So I think this horse got a bit of ability, and I, I think that the distance will suit the mile. Uh, has barrier seven. I think that's a uh, pretty good thing based on where the speed map is. Obviously, the lifeline jump forward. This horse might be able to just get uh, into a bit of cover back in the field, but they want to be hoping for a bit of tempo to be able to come into the race. But I think it'll finish off nicely. Uh, then in for fourth, number four, Skiddle. Uh, so I've gone the four at the top of the market here. I just think they're the hardest to beat. I thought it was really good last night out behind Power Scheme, and I think if it runs a similar race here, it's Really building towards a win and suggesting that that run last start of the 1,500 metres suggests that the mile will be really good and it's appreciated that extra step up in distance, so I'll give it a good chance in for fourth. So recap the numbers on race number two at Caulfield. Number two, the lifeline on top for me. To beat number three, Long Jack in for second. In for third, number one, Huntley Castle. In for fourth, number four, Skiddle. So I'm moving on to race number three on the card over the 1,000 metres. A three-year-old race here. Some really nice two-year-olds from last preparation stepping out here. Look at the speed map. I'd say there's a lot of speed. Cardiff and Satorial Splendor will probably jump out from barriers one and two. Lesage usually likes to get forward. I'm Immortal will show plenty of pace to try and find the top. As will, uh, I think Tonic might drop back. Look similar to what it did last start at, at Bendigo. Uh, and then Moldover will probably be out towards the speed once again like it was last time out. And number six, Meteorite, will be out there as well. So there's a lot of speed in this race. And as such, I think it'll set up really nicely for a back market, who I know probably will be from the from the gate. It's number five, Ghana, for Gary Richards, the South Australian visitor. I think this horse got a great chance. It was very good last time out winning at Morpherville. Of course, steps up in class here, and it's going to have to take on some, some decent horses and decent opposition. But I just think they're just going to run very quick out front. This horse better just swoop around them late. And really power over the top of them and, and finish off nicely. So I'd like it on top to be number eight, C Tonic, who I mentioned also will probably get back in the field. And if it can replicate what it did last start at Bendigo, I think it'll go really close to winning once again. Really liked its effort there. And I think $11 is a nice each way value at the th and three dollars 30 the place. Another one that's a, a good each way value, I think number two, Lucifer's Reward. It's massively over the odds. It, this horse's last start win at Sandown was terrific. It was sat by on the speed. Really just charging, showed to a very nice turn of foot. And I think Brendan McCarthy's got a very nice horse here. And I, I really would think about having something each way. And you look at last preparation, obviously went around the Prince Sussex Showcase race at Caulfield. Beat was only two at point at lengths behind Super Seth. We know that form's not too bad. And then prior to that, obviously a one at Mooney Valley on Dubu. So this horse has got a lot of abilities and got massive odds to find out. And it's only carrying 57, so it's not like it's well over in the weight since a lot of these are carrying the 57 so i think this horse got a great chance as well especially if they overdo it out front this horse might want to sit back off the speed and and really get uh, charged the line late but I could definitely entertain having something on it as uh, in for third and then in for fourth for me look i'm going to go with number one i am immortal i'm just not sure i mean there's going to be so much pace on it's going to have to really go jump out and run it's had a lot of long time coming into this preparation i know the form stacks up for this horse compared to the other ones but this horse they've been i think having a couple of issues with it. recent jump out was ridden along um 
Uh, it's been nominated quite a few times now, been scratched. So I've just got a little bit of a concern there over that. I think it might need the first up run. Uh, I'm happy to wait for it to watch round rather than uh, step into it as the, at the favourite odds. But this is a great race, very hard. But uh, I'm pretty keen on uh, number five, Garner. As I said, I think it'll go back in the field. It'll be able to swoop over him late with, off the hot tempo and finish over the top late at the $7.50 and $2.50 the place. In for second, number eight, C. Tonic could do something very similar. Linda Meach in the saddle, and I liked his last start when at Bendigo, really. This horse is also rock-hard fit in comparison to some of these, so that extra fitness edge might just be enough for it. So I've got it in for second. In for third, I like uh, the chance of number two, Lucifer's Reward at the each-way odds. I think it's well over the odds. thought it was really good last time out. And in for fourth, number one, I Am Immortal. As I said, got the class edge. Just want to keep an eye on it first up. Race number four on the card, 400 metre benchmark seven, uh, benchmark 90 sorry for the mares. And look at the speed map here. I'd say Hawkeye on her will get out and run, and Linguist will be up there. Uh, I'd say Moret won't be too far behind him off the inside barrier. But for me, there's not a whole lot of speed in this race once again. And look, I'm very happy to play number one Moret here. I think she's a great chance first up. Her first up stats are very good. Forget that soft range. You know she'll get through that going. She'll get through it on top of the ground. She's just all around a very good mare. And um, she went some very good races last start. I mean, she resumed first up at Waterball at a benchmark 64. Won that uh, only by the narrowest margin. But then she went to a benchmark 70. Won very easily to Chuka being Dancing Tycoon. Then she's only point over length off Princess Jenny at Mooney Valley over the 600 metres. Then, of course, she won a Group 3 at Moorfield being Dreamed over 800 metres. So, and then she finished second, uh, for a matter of fact, behind Princess Jenny once again uh, in a Group 1 race there. So, I mean... She's got a, a lot of ability, and I mean, she is massively over the odds. I think Barra 1's going to suit perfectly. She'll be able to sit just in behind the speed and be able to finish over top of it. I think $7.50 is a very nice price to take about a very good mare who's got the class edge on some of these. So we're happy to have her on top. To beat double Evan Zambo, who will need the speed on, but boy, was she good last start. She was so unlucky not to win at Sandy on the Lakeside track. Her second up stats are much better. She said two starts, second up for a win and a third. I think she's going to be much improved, and she's back... Uh, and probably better than ever. She contested some very good races last preparation. I mean, she's group three, uh, sorry, group two place. Of course, she finished third behind Quifilla. Then she went around um, and finished behind Spanish Whisper at Flemington at 400 metres. Um, so she's got a lot of ability. She's um, going to be, I think she'll fire here and she'll run well. She just needs to speed on in this race. So I've got her in for, in for second. In for third, for me, number three, Hawk Brown Herschel is very good. And if she gets her own uh, time out in the front like she did last time out, she'll be very hard to beat. Uh, I think she'll be, as I said, she'll lob herself on speed. But I did like how she got herself on the wrong leg around Mooney Valley by the looks of it. And uh, for me, 2 dollars 40 is very short. But I think she'll, I do concede she'll be hard to beat, just not willing to chime into those odds. Uh, in for the fourth, look, I want to throw this horse in because I thought it was well over the odds. Number four, Pua Scott. Go back and watch this last start behind Tafani and uh, Hawk Brown Herschel. Uh, she was very good. She really did go to the line well, and she didn't have a whole lot of luck in that race. Second up here, she gets that, goes from 1,200 at 1,400 metres, which is going to suit. I think she'll be much better when she gets to the mile. But I think $34 and $7 a place, massively over the odds. Uh, she has to deal with barrier 12, and, but I think Dwayne Dunn can, can make something work out of that because look at, this, look at the speed. All this, There's a bit of speed drawn inside of her, so... If she can find a good spot, she's massively over the odds. Um, another horse I wanted to, didn't want to leave out is uh, number eight, So Taken. I mean, I haven't got it in my numbers, but I'd say it'll be finishing the line well. It was pretty good last start behind Grey Worm. Comes back on top of the ground. Number six, Mystery Love's got a bit of a chance, and Shakura's also uh, within a chance. Also, there's a lot of, really a lot of form lines that mix in here in a very good race once again. But for me, number one, Moret, she's got the class edge on these, and I think that she'll be winning this race, especially off barrier one. I could see her getting the perfect run into the race. So I've got her on top of the $7.50 and $12.40 the place. In the second, number 11, Zalbo, as I mentioned, a uh, very quality galloper. I liked what I saw last time out. Very unlucky not to win. Uh, in for third, for me, number three, Hawkbury and her, the favourite. And in for fourth, number four, Pure Scott, just at the each way valley. I think that was well well over the odds. Moving to race number five, here's the first of our group races of the day. It's the Haynow Stakes for the uh, Mares over uh, 1,200 metres. Look at the speed map here, I'd say Pippi, she'll find the top and she'll be very hard to beat. I mean, she won't have a whole lot of uh, speed on with her. I'd say Diamond Effort will probably sit just in behind. Grey Shadow might get forward. It also is back in its uh, recent Caulfield win and charge the home late. Manicure will probably get out off the, inside, the outside barrier as well. And 
uh, be rolling along. But for me, look, number four, she's going to be so hard to beat. Just because I can't see much pressure on her. And she was very good last time out beating Spanish Whisper. And I thought, I think that's good form to bring into this. I think she'll just be extremely hard to beat. I was against her last time out, but I'm not going to be against her here. She just, she'll get the easy time to lead and be very hard to run down. For me, someone who's massively over the odds, and I am going to probably have something each way on is number two, Divine Quality. Now, she's going to need him to run along, but her, um, look at last preparation. I mean, she was 2.7 lengths behind him at a time fresh, and that's what weight for age group one. She was eight eight lengths off sunlight, net, oh, sorry, nearly nine lengths in a group one there. I understand, like, you know, nine lengths off, but that's a group one. Then she went and uh, finished uh, last in another group one at Morphaville for a Phillies and Mares race. That, was, of course, was the lot. Uh, initially, was that eighth in the Lightning Stakes. That reads really good form. She beat Booker, who's a group one winner. Uh, she's, a, of course, Oakley Plate winner. Um, she, she beat her over uh, by 3.3 lengths at Flemington. I said, I could, well, I can see she's probably better at Flemington. She's very good fresh. She's had five starts fresh for three wins and a placing. Um, she's back in class here. She contested genuine weight for age group one races last preparation. She's back to a group three against her own sex here. She is massively over the odds. And I'll definitely be having something each way on her at the $26 and $6 a place. Uh, in the third, for me, uh, number three, Embrace Me. She's been pretty good uh, resuming, and I thought she was very good last time out behind Pippi, and she's only 1.7 lengths off, and she goes around 20, $21, so figure that one out. I mean, that's massively over the odds, if you ask me. The other horse that I wanted to give a chance is number 11, Tafane. I mean, if it gets into a similar spot, the last start at Moody Valley, uh, I think she'll go very well, and she proves she's got a lot of ability. Last preparation, where she finished second in a group two at Morphville. And also, you know, string together a really nice win last start. And I think she, she's really progressive and she's going to um, give us uh, something to catch. But for me, I wouldn't want to leave out number seven, Everyday Lady, if you're playing uh, wide at first fours. And, and that, I thought she was very good first up on Fartner over 1,000 metres. The extra 200 metres is going to suit Will Clark and would have brought her down for reasons. Clearly has a good opinion. Uh, Arisi is, of course, resuming, but I obviously want to see it go to, over further. But $59 about her is probably a little bit silly, but... Uh, for me, yeah, look, very good race. Very good race once again. Um, but I'm happy to be with Pippi. The $2 is very short. I don't usually like take um, odds about that, but she didn't do anything wrong last time out. She gave a great kick. She's going to get the exact same type of run here. And for me, she just can't be beaten um, based off what I've seen. Uh, if a second, number two, Divine Quality is mentioned, you've got to have something each way on her because if they do overdo it, if they decide to actually get it forward, which I would like to see Bo Burns be positive out of the gates and get prominent, she... Uh, has class on these and she can win fresh so she is massively over the odds and she does tend to pop up when she is fresh and at the big odds uh in for third number three embrace me and then in for fourth number 11 tafane look the other horse i did leave out number six angelic ruler of uh um as well as everyday later i think this horse she's got a lot of ability we saw her come across from wa and be group a uh, really group competitive here at the, uh, flemington caulfield and mooney valley last preparation I mean, it's a 0.2 of length by Princess Jenny uh, in a group three there. 0.4 of length by Spanish Whisper in a group two. 0.5 of length by Crofillo, of course, the uh, Adelaide Derby women. Like, that, that's that's some serious form. And, I mean, she's definitely going to be... Uh, oh, sorry, um, Crofillo is the, the Oaks winner there. I, I, my apologies. But, I mean, that's some serious form as well. So she'll be well up in there in a chance. So there's a lot of good ra uh, chances in that race there in race number five. But... For me, Pippi, she's just gonna be hard to beat based off the what we what, what we can see on the speed map and you know what she's done so far. Moving on into race number six, it's the Group Three 2000 Meter uh, Benny Bank MRC Foundation Cup. And look at the speed map here. I'd say that uh, there's not a whole lot of speed. I'd say Wolf will find the top. Uh, I'd say Brew and Rocks might go forward from the outside barrier. Uh, sick and Darabat. I would would like to hope that they won't be too far off the speed. Uh, super tight as Supernova would be interested to see what they do with inside barriers sticky gates to deal with but um, still Prince might be closer to the speed this time around as well but for me just from what I saw last time out number 5 second Darabad is going to be so hard to beat it was an enormous last start in the uh, Fian Stakes at Mooney Valley of course wait for H group 2 race over the 600 metres it was very wide it was way off the track and still charged home very nicely and she, uh, he actually put in one of the better sprints of the day of the last sort of uh, 400 metres. So that was a top, top effort and it goes around $5 and tells the place. So I think that's very nice odds. And I'm hoping that they be quite, uh, and they get out of the gates and get forward and not get back like they did last time out. I think this horse will be very hard to beat if it can find a spot. 
Uh, in for second, number four, Steel Prince. Of course, he's going on to further things. But I liked what I saw first up on Super Titus. Thought he was very good. And the extra uh, distance is going to suit him very nicely. Uh, the other horse that I mentioned there, number 11, Super Titus. Man, he couldn't have been any better last uh, start. And I am jumping off him this time around. Uh, I did tip him last time. And he, of course, got the got the win despite being three wide, no cover. And that was a superb win here at Caulfield. The extra distance is going to suit him as well. So massive respect to him. But... Um, he's got to deal with Barrow 2 this time around. He's going to need a bit of luck from that inside Barrow. And for me, I'll just not learn to beat him this time around, but do give him a lot of respect in for third. And then in for fourth, number 14, Wolf. I mean, this horse is uh, really proven to be a decent stayer. It was uh, disappointing last time out in the heavy uh, behind Wood Gok, but it comes back on top of the ground here, potentially. Prior to that, it beat Stampede. I and mean, that's some, some decent form. Stampede's not a bad gallop around the 2,000 metres. So this horse... We'll lob on the speed, and we know Linda Meach can do it when she's out front, so I wouldn't be leaving Wolf out of uh, out of contention. I think Subinova's a real good talent, as well as uh, Etymology, so there's a lot of uh, if, if, buts, and maybes here, but for me, just from what I saw and from what I see on the speed map, second darabat has got to be on top for me at the $5 and $2 of the place. In for second, number four, still Prince. In for third, number 11, Super Titus. In for fourth, number 14, Wolf. Now here we go, straight into the Sir Rupert Clark Stakes over 400 metres, Group 1 race here. Look at the speed map, say Age of Chivalry and Be Good to Mother will fire out from the inside barriers. Uh, Streets of Avalon will get forward, I'd say Dispatch and Cliff's Edge will spear across and get towards the speed. Best of Days might try and get close and Spirit of Alice. There, there could be a bit of speed in this race and as such, look, oh, I think if we get to that wet range... Uh, this horse, number eight, Widgie Turf, he is massively over the odds. He was very good last start upon the inevitable. He charged home from the back late. Nothing really did come from the back uh, at Mooney Valley that day. It was sort of, you had to be around that midfield and swooping position. Uh, he was very good. He, and his second up stats are excellent. He's had four starts, second up for two wins and a second. He loves this track. He's only ever missed a placing once at this track. And he's only ever missed a placing uh, on eight occasions in his career. I mean... Oh, that's 31 races. He's a very consistent gallop, and if we get into that wet range, he's going to be very hard to beat. I think $17 is massively over the odds for him. He's a genuine Group 1 performer, and I think it'll be hard to beat. The other horse that I want to have, so a two-bet uh, strategy here, I also want to have a go at number 12, Amphitrite. I thought she was excellent resuming first up as well. She comes out to the, the 400 metres, which is going to suit much better for her. She gets Caulfield. She's won here before. She's won a group race here before. Um, she doesn't mind the wet conditions, so if you get into that wet range, uh, I think that'll suit her okay. Uh, and I just think that she gets a very nice barrier as well, so she's going to be very hard to beat as well. So I like to have a two-bet play for me. It's going to be those two on top. Uh, I think they're, they're the genuine uh, weight for age group one horses here. and I mean, it's not a weight for age race, but they're the genuine group performance, uh, performers. And I think they'll be very hard to beat. Uh, and another thing to mention with number 12, Amphitrite, second up, she's never missed a play, so... I really like what I see. We'll get a bit of a form guide there with Pippi going around the race prior as well as Embrace Me. So a couple of those horses that she finished behind last start will be going around. So I'm interested to see how they go. But uh, I've got her, an each way play on her as well. So she's in for second. In for third for me, um, look, I want to give number one Best of Days a chance. He's got to get uh, across from a wide barrier. But he was very good behind Homesman last time out at Mooney Valley. And I think... Coming back from the mile, back to the 400 metres, might just be, do the trick. I think he's well over the odds as well. So, the bet, number one best of days in for third. Uh, then in for fourth, for me, look, you can't leave out number four and be good to know if it does get the, uh, uh, the you know, I guess, the the, pay, the, the, the race of suit. Um, if we're on top of the ground, it'll suit be better. He's gotten through wet before. He was very good beating Haunted uh, two starts ago, first up. It was a little bit disappointing last time out, but they did go out very fast, and wait, the scales of justice was just too good on that occasion. That's a genuine Group 1 race. So I think he's a great chance. I just can't believe he's 2 old. I can't believe he's the favourite, really. I mean, that's, for me, a little bit over, you know, a little bit silly, probably a bit of an overreaction. But for me, look, I'm very happy to be number 8, Widgie Turf, on top to beat number 12, Amphitrite. But as I mentioned, I'm going to have an each-way play on both of them. I think they're both the top two chances. In for third, number one, best of days. Think it can uh, resume uh, off back off that uh, group two fee and stakes run behind Holmes from last start. And then number 14, be good to mother in for fourth. Uh, look, I didn't want to leave out number six, Cliff's Edge. I mean, this always had a bit of a spell between runs and uh, two starts back by Mystic Journey. Master Zara said he thought he was going to win that race. And of course, you know, he took a good horse to, to beat uh, him. If he's allowed to roll along in front as well, um, or sit just in behind them, he, he'll be, get, be getting close. And I've always had a lot of time for number four, Madison County, for uh, the 
Murray Baker, Andrew Forsman, yeah, but, um, first, his horse is first up, but she's got a lot of ability, uh, sorry, he's got a lot of ability, and he'll be coming home late, I mean, look at form, uh, group one form, genuine, group one form, he's only 2.7 lengths off the Autumn Sun last preparation, he was two lengths off Angel of Truth, and uh, and then three lengths off it in the derby, of course, there, and if we get that soft range, Madison County would be definitely coming home late, so I'll give it a good chance, if Barrett 2 for me is a little bit of a concern, but... That's that's the weight for age group one. Oh, sorry, the group one Super Clark Stakes at 400 meters. Moving into race number eight now, and we of course have the uh, Aquas Jim Maloney Stakes for the three-year-old fillies. Looking at the speed map here, I'd say that uh, Westport would probably use the inside barrier to get forward. I'd say Tragic on Elegant will get forward. Acting will try and get across and find the top. But for me, it's probably not at heaps of speed for a 400 meter race to be honest. And I think some of these back marks might want to get too far back. And uh, for me, I think uh, acting will be actually be pretty hard to beat. I, I really liked what I saw last time. If it can get across that outside barrier, I don't think it'll be hard to beat. I liked that Sandow run. It really beat the others quite convincingly. I think it's a horse on the up, and I think it'll be very hard to beat. I like it at the $6.50 and $12.60 the place. Uh, so I've got it on top to beat number seven, Deserve, who Jamie Carr did say last start uh, that it would need further. Gets that extra distance now, goes from 1,200 metres up to 1,400. Second up here would be much better. Uh, last time it was at 1,400 metres, was beaten by Charlotte at, at Flemington. That was a nice run there. So this horse has got a lot of ability. I did tip it on top last time out, and I'll go against it this time, but I'm going to have something each way on it as well. I think that she'll definitely appreciate the extra ground. So I've got her in for second. If a third number one, Kuru up, very uh, weary on this horse, but... For me, not a lot of speed. Barry 15 has got a little bit to overcome, but I really like what I saw last night by Sassy Salatage. Um, and she's a, a, definitely a filly that's going places. She's got a lot of ability. And that was the first time she got beaten last um, last start. So she'll be running on late. And who, who knows? Linda Linda mentioned the sale. They might even dare to go forward. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But got her in for third. And then in for fourth, number 12, excused. I thought... Um, yeah, it was pretty good last time behind the lifeline. It's said to have got um, lifeline on top in a, in a race uh, prior, in race number two, I think it was. And this horse was uh, really good behind Exhilarates in a group three. It was came from the back and really ran on nicely, and that's got some good form. So number 12, Excuse, has got a good chance as well. At, uh, nice each way. It was uh, Craig Williams in the saddle. So very nice race here. And I'll do like uh, number eight acting. I think it can get forward and get a uh, lob on the speed and prove very hard to beat. To beat. Uh, number seven, Deserved, who, as I mentioned, will be having an each-way play on it as well. Uh, number one, Kuri Rupp in for, th in for third. Just think he'll be getting too far back, but I really respect the class of this horse. And in for fourth, number 12, Excused. Moving on to the final race, the Cardinal 100 metres. Open race here. Look at the speed map. I'd say that Plague Stone will, will run out and try and find the top. Runson will be out and, and up on the speed. Batter Yoz will be prominent. So Vane Street and Innkeeper will try and get across from outside Barry. So bit of speed on here. And based off what I can see on the speed map, I think number uh, nine, Terbium, I think he can turn around from last start. He was obviously very disappointing at the Valley. Or maybe he just didn't handle the Valley. He comes back to Caulfield. He's won here before, of course. He beat Zusain in a Group 3 race, and that's some nice form to bring into this. And second up here, Tongue Tie comes off, so a bit of a gear change. He was good in his recent Cranbourne trial. I think he'll be back to his best here, and I think he's drawn to get the perfect run of the race, so I'm happy to be with him on top. To beat number eight, Liar, who's got to deal with the inside barrier, so I won't want to be too far back and needs a little bit of luck. But Linda Mead, she's uh, obviously into great form, and I'm sure she can get it out and run it home nicely. I really liked its last start behind Exhilarates. Uh, she hit the line well, didn't have a whole lot of luck there. Second up, she's going to be much better, and stepping out to this uh, extra distance, um, well, not yet, but it comes to the 1100 second up, I think it'll be much better for the run. If a third number one order commands, got to carry the weight. This horse is proven fresh, proven here at Caulfield. Of course, beat Jungle Edge at Caulfield last preparation. That's not, not bad form. And uh, if he can just carry the weight, he'll be a major player, especially off the barrier draw and the way the brace is going to play out. I think it's a great chance in for third. And then for me, if a fourth number five, Plague Stone, if it get across and, and run, it'll be hard to beat as well. But there's a lot of speed on. Uh, fresh form is very good. I mean, he rarely, he hasn't missed a place. He hasn't missed top two finish from four uh, starts fresh, but he's had two goes here at Caulfield, and he's only had the one place. So for me, I just want to leave it out. Uh, I, I, a couple others I might like, especially with the speed on the race. So for me, last race of the card, I do like the chance of number nine, Turbium, at the $5, the Don 95 the place, to beat number eight, Liar, in for second, in for third, number one, Order Command, and in for fourth, number five, Plague Stone. So that is the uh, preview and all the tips for the card at Caulfield. Hopefully you have a, 
a great day tomorrow. It's really good racing. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, getting in, we're into spring now, and we're really starting to get into the, the business end. Got some good horses going around and some good races. Keep an eye out for my uh, Ramwick preview, of course. We're looking at the shorts and the Colgate Optic White Stakes there. Uh, group one race, so really nice card there, and also be going around the tracks looking at Morpherville and Eagle Farm. So looking forward to that. Uh, good luck for having a punt tomorrow, and thanks for following me. Go and check me out on my social media pages, of course, Sea Lane Racing under, Racing Tips on Facebook and Sea Lane underscore Race Tips on Instagram. So good luck for following tomorrow, and uh, happy punting, and enjoy the races.